Oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. It looks like, yes, we are now ready for the ceremonial snake cutting. Ah, uh, you all know what that means. There once existed a top secret government agency called the Patriots, who began their operations back in the 70s, and have worked since then to control and filter the flow of information that was released to the public on specific discoveries. Examples of their influence on the world are cover-ups of major incidents like the Sahelanthropus skull discovery in Chad, to multiple superhuman or perfect soldier projects over the past few decades, and of course, the creation of Axe Body Spray by Big Boss and MSF in the 70s. Though, after I sifted through a bunch of the Patriots' encrypted data, I was able to uncover possibly the biggest secret, a conspiracy that they so coyly flaunted under our noses and could rock the world of science once revealed. This being Isla del Monstruo and the terrifying taboo Tyrannosaurus Titan that transcends technology, Gear Rex, the Nuclear Dragon. Gear Rex is a zombie dinosaur turned mutant monster first spotted on the island known as Isla del Monstruo, though, according to research done on the creature, it should be known that it does not originate from that area, unlike all the other monsters. Instead, it appears to be a mostly man-made monstrosity, but more importantly, Gear Rex functions as the biological origin point for the nuclear-capable mobile tank unit known as Metal Gear Rex. Though, how could a mysterious creature never reported before or after the 70s impact a machine built 30 years later? Well, let me explain that to you. First, let's discuss the name of the creature. Now, obviously, an assumption one could make about Gear Rex's name is that it's in reference to Metal Gear Rex, as one of Gear Rex's own subtitles is the Steel Fanged King. Though, this type of logic only works if you accept that we live in a video game where time can be told out of order that doesn't make any sense, as Metal Gear Rex hadn't begun proper development until the early 2000s. Though, I should note that design documents featuring a tank that looks very similar to Metal Gear Rex did exist long ago, at least 1964, which is 10 years before Gear Rex was discovered by MSF. These documents were viewed and partly explained to Big Boss during Operation Snake Eater, which leads me to believe that Gear Rex might have been named after these documents. Though, why would it be named Gear Rex anyways? Well, the Rex itself is Latin and translates to King, which explains its subtitle of the Steel Fanged King. But the Gear portion of his name reinforces this connection to Metal Gears, as the term Metal Gear was coined by the Soviet weapons scientist I'm Alexander Leonovich Grani. As his bipedal tank design was done in a way to mimic the missing link between man and ape, Metal Gear would act as the same missing link, the one between infantry and artillery, and would revolutionize weapons development forever. And we've seen in the data on Skullface and XOF that this isn't the only time that a Metal Gear has been named according to a missing link, as in the 1980s, the development of the revolutionary Metal Gear began, this being Metal Gear Sahalanthropus, which in its docile state looks an awful lot like Metal Gear Rex. But more importantly, it's named after a real-life missing link known as the Sahalanthropus Skull, which is an ancient skull of a proto-humanoid species Species, though the skull itself had its discovery covered up by Cypher, or the Patriots, with plans on releasing it to the public after they got a head start on genetic research using it. You call that thing Sahalanthropus. Where does the name come from? Well, several years ago, an excavation team discovered a hominid skull in the Sahel region. Cypher gave the specimen the name Sahalanthropus, Man of Sahel. And then they covered the whole thing up. Why? They probably wanted to monopolize information about human evolution to have a head start in their genetic research. So Gear Rex's existence being covered up in a similar manner to the Sahelanthropus skull isn't out of the question. Though to cover something up, you must know it exists in the first place. And it's possible that some members of the Patriots were already well aware of the existence of Gear Rex long before Big Boss or MSF discovered it.
as, according to archived codec records recovered from Operation Snake Eater, Dr. Clark, the scientific member of the Patriots, spoke to Big Boss about various movies that she enjoyed. One of the movies in particular that sticks out to me is the 1956 classic Godzilla, King of the Monsters, which she watched the original Japanese version of that hadn't been released outside of Japan. So that means that we know that Dr. Clark has a tendency to travel around the world even before Operation Snake Eater, which could explain how she might have encountered a Gear Rex once. Back to her discussion. When she explains the plot to Big Boss, you might notice that the origins of Godzilla and Gear Rex are actually rather similar. They are both creatures lost through time and turned into what they are now thanks to the testing of nuclear warheads by man. So much so that we even have a variation of Godzilla's origin story, albeit from a different movie from the 90s, but knowing the Patriots, 90s movies were probably existed back in the 70s and that's how they had access to them. But in this movie, Godzilla was an undiscovered species of dinosaur that they dubbed the Godzillasaurus that was then corrupted by warheads and turned into the monstrous beast we know him as. This origin actually is rather close to Gearex's known one, as it was a dinosaur corrupted by atomic weapon testing. Though, Gearex wasn't a surviving species like the Godzillasaurus. Instead, thanks to DNA evidence, it is suggested that Gearex is a zombie revived through Haitian voodoo, with zombie powder likely applied to its bones by those looking for a powerful tool to control. But when Gear Rex revived from the dead, it proved itself too strong for man to guide it, and began rampaging through any settlement it came across, becoming this legendary immortal monster. And it's from here that Gear Rex would go on to multiply and spread, some even ending up in locations like the Marshall Islands, that then resulted in the perceived mutated form we know of it now. But back to the main reason I brought up this conversation. Dr. Clark ends her discussion about Godzilla with an awfully ominous statement to Big Boss. I have to go to Japan. Really? That's too bad. Well, if you wait 40 years, you might be able to see it in America too. 40 years, eh, Clark? Well, let's run these numbers. Project Snake Eater was a secret mission that occurred during the end of 1964, which, if we jump ahead 40 years from, we arrive in late 2004, less than a year, honestly, only a couple months away from the early 2005 incident that occurred on Shadow Moses Island, the one that involved Metal Gear Rex, a nuclear-armed, Gear Rex-shaped Godzilla in America. As well, Shadow Moses was also where one of Dr. Clark's longtime associates resided, this being the lead head of the Metal Gear Rex development project and the DARPA chief, Donald Anderson, aka Mr. Signet. And by digging through his records with Big Boss, we know that Donald Anderson might have had a lot of knowledge of Gear Rex thanks to his association with the Patriots, and he used these to make additions to Metal Gear Rex, so that it would more closely resemble the Beast. Firstly, this can be clearly seen in the amount of missile compartments added to Metal Gear Rex, which makes it appear like Rex has a near endless supply of stockpiled missiles that reload whenever it needs to so it can shoot around willy-nilly. This is clearly done to imitate the rapidly growing spikes found on Gear Rex, which, in the right conditions, can explode with the same power of missiles after it roars. Which, speaking of Gear Rex's roar, Metal Gear Rex was programmed with a roar as well. In fact, it may be the same exact roar, since we know that Big Boss has a recording of Gear Rex's roar that he took from it when he would fight the monster on the island. And then you have the highly pressurized acidic fluid that Gear Rex can shoot like a water jet from its cancerous protuberance. ArmsTech co-opted this function to create something a little different so people wouldn't exactly know where it originated from. This being the mobile tactical high energy laser that was equipped to Metal Gear Rex's lower body. This function using the PISS system, or the Power Ion Signal Slinging System. 
Though, with the position of the laser changed as to not mirror the creature too perfectly, Donald Anderson needed to find something to resemble Gearex's protuberance. Thus, instead of opting into imitating the function of the body part like he had done with the other previous examples, Anderson instead went to copy the byproduct that that body part made. This resulted in Metal Gear Rex's most noticeable armament, the Railgun, which was added to Metal Gear Rex by Hal Emmerich sort of as a whim in order to create a way to fire a missile that couldn't be picked up by modern radar technology. The nuclear warhead is designed to be fired from the Railgun like a projectile. It doesn't use fuel, so it isn't considered a missile. That way it can get around all sorts of international treaties. But unlike a missile, the railgun doesn't burn any propellant, so it can't be detected by any current ballistic missile detection systems. An invisible nuclear warhead. As the way a railgun fires is it generates a powerful magnetic field using high electrical currents. These currents then can accelerate a projectile and launch it out fuellessly up to speeds of Mach 6. Or to put it very simply, a railgun functions essentially like an extremely complex slingshot. And you know whose acidic mucus is used to create extremely refined rubber? That's right, it's Gearex. As MSF was able to collect samples of Gearex's mucus during their many battles with the creature and use its concentrate to create the ultimate co-op weapon, the human slingshot, which is a weapon so dangerous it's forbidden in modern warfare due to its unrivaled power and devastating effects. When used correctly, it is able to propel a man at such speeds that his body completely destroys any armored transport vehicle or tank it makes contact with. Though you might ask, how is Donald Anderson even aware of such a powerful weapon? Well, that's because he was a huge benefactor in the creation of the human slingshot. As according to records recovered from the San Jormino incident, Anderson had discussed his plans with Big Boss about the human cannon. Though it was met with criticism, he later changed his idea to a human slingshot in order to get funding for the future cannon itself. Though, the utterly unstoppable power of this weapon is likely why it got covered up, as well as why he didn't stand in the way of Otacon attaching a very similar, albeit way weaker, modern version of the Death Machine to Metal Gear Rex. Though, why would the Patriots be the ones covering up this connection to the creature? Well, I believe, much like the Sahalanthropus Skull, the Patriots were planning to unveil the existence of Gear Rex once they had discovered a way to tame them. This might be why Dr. Clark gave a 40-year warning to Big Boss, as they originally planned for 40 years in the future to release the Gear Rex prototypes to the world. Though, given its sort of uncontrollable nature, that must have been cut, so they instead opted into the Metal Gear side of things, so that they could work on the Gear Rexes even longer. But, after the creation of other unmanned weapons like the Gecko units, the Gear Rex slowly became obsolete. But, I was able to unarchive an unused documentary planned for release eight years from now about the Gear Rex. Though sadly, some of the footage has been damaged. Nature does not exist in a vacuum. It's easy to determine its beauty, its strength, its sublime, and think of it as a superior entity that sits well and beyond human grasp. But nature does not exist above us, it exists in parallel with humanity. As we inhabit it, we engage in an exchange of legacies with nature. While the ways it influences life and by extension us are numerous, we too have left and continue to leave our mark on nature. One of the most unfortunate of such marks has been our wielding of atomic fission. A natural anomaly discovered in time of war, 
the ability to induce nuclear meltdown and weaponize the power of a thousand suns has etched scars not just into our history, but into our relationship with nature as well, as the literal radioactive fallout of our actions have twisted and mutated the very world we inherited. And nowhere is that better seen than with Gear Rex. It is not possible to determine what this creature was initially. Its reptilian features may hint at it being born as a gecko or monitor, but either way, little of that remains. The Gear Rex now stands as a large theropod brute wyvern, covered in hard osteodermal shelling and spikes. Its tiny arms and thin arched back growth contrast with its thick legs and massive skull to communicate unmistakably that something is indeed very wrong with this being. Gear Rex is believed to be the result of some kind of organism being repeatedly exposed to leftover radiation following intense, unrelated nuclear experimentation. Very similar to the marine mega-reptile incidents involving <coughs> off the coast of Japan, whatever the precise origin may be, the Gear Rex is a significant threat to any ecosystem it invades. It is highly aggressive and actively seeks out conflict, beyond just simple food motivation. Due to its enlarged throat, it can release devastatingly powerful roars that can cause internal damage to the ears and skulls of whatever creature unfortunate enough to be in range. Once engaged in combat, the true power of this monster is revealed. From the protrusion on its back, which is structurally similar to a scorpion's metastoma, the Gear Rex can eject a specialized mucus through the tip. This mucus is highly corrosive. It registers well beyond any established pH scales and melts through virtually anything. Any prolonged contact with this fluid is absolutely lethal. The Gear Rex can spray that liquid across long distances as a pressurized jet beam, increasing its deadliness many fold. This is its key weapon, but should this not be enough, Rex can also detach its spikes like missiles, allowing them to shatter in response to the creature's roar and increase its range through shrapnel? The Gear Rex is not, however, just a destructive force. While eliminating it is necessary to protect the ecosystems it may invade, various parts of its body can be repurposed for utility components. Its deadly mucus is especially useful as it can be reverse engineered into an adhesive substance that can stick anything together. Thus, it is recommended to engage the Gear Rex whenever it emerges, with the primary strategy laid out by the central office being... Bombing the fuck out of it? Though all this research does leave a terrifying question. What happened to those Gear Rexes who were captured? As we know, they failed rehabilitation. Are they still lurking in the shadows of the world? Could these hostile conquerors return to the world one day and live up to their title of Nuclear Dragon? Well, I guess that'll be for the cyborgs of the future to address. Uh, looks like my signal's getting weak now. Uh, thank you. I was actually able to accomplish this thanks to the help of the people over at Patreon. Uh, if you want to help, you can head on over to patreon.com slash guy. Every little bit helps keep this flowing as smoothly as it does. Uh, to, and be sure that if you want to avoid a Gear Rex uprising, to buy Shimonetta, a boring world with a concept of dirty jokes doesn't exist at buyshimonetta.com. Let your dreams drive you. Oh, a message of hope to today's young people from David Hayter. Mm. I never actually said that.